All right, thanks, guys. We are 6-3 and three in our last nine underdog plays on patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also 6-1-1 one one in our last eight daily double picks, and we are 11-3-1 in our college football package. That's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Link for that site is in the description section below. All right, guys, we got ourselves a nice little uh, slate of Major League Baseball action so let's go ahead and get into it, beginning with the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Diamondbacks, and that's going to be a 340 Eastern first pitch in Arizona. The cards are minus 115, total at 9. We saw a 15-cent fade of St. Louis in the early wagering. We also saw movement downward on the total. The cards open buck thirty down to 115, total open 9.5, down to 9 flat. 56% of the consensus is leaning toward the Cardinals, 69% shaded toward the under. Right now, Arizona is plus 105 on the money line. St. Louis plus a buck 50, laying the run and a half. We have Michael Waka for the Cards, Merrill Kelly for the Diamondbacks. Kelly's just 12 and 14 on the year, 4.31 ERA, 1.30 WHIP. Meanwhile, Michael Waka on the other side for St. Louis. Has 101 strikeouts on the year. Now the Diamondbacks have dropped two out of their last three ball games. They also rank 17th in home hits allowed. Meanwhile, St. Louis on the other side, winners in six out of their last seven on the road. They're in first place in the NL Central, and they rank third in runs allowed on average per game. Now total-wise, St. Louis is 4-1 to the under in their last five, taking on the Diamondbacks. I'm a lean Cardinals, minus a buck 15. And the under nine runs in that game. Next matchup, Brewers, Reds, 640 Cincinnati. The Brewers are minus 145 total at nine. Saw a 10-cent fade of Milwaukee in the early wagering. The Brewers open a buck 55, down to 145, totals at nine. 65% leaning toward the Brewers, 75% leaning toward the over. Right now, Cincinnati's plus 135 on the money line. Milwaukee plus a buck 20, laying the run and a half. We have Jordan Lyles for the Brewers, Tyler Molly for the Reds. Molly's just 2-11 on the year with a 4.93 ERA. Kind of the, uh, the black sheep in this uh, pretty good starting rotation for the Reds, although uh, they couldn't put up much runs this year. The record doesn't uh, kind of implicate uh, the quality of their starting rotation. But anyway, uh, on the other side, Jordan Lyles for the Brewers, 11-8 on the year, 140 strikeouts. The Reds have dropped three out of their last four. They're also 34 and 45 against the spread at home. They rank 26 in hits on average per game. Now the Brewers on the other side, they are five games ahead of Milwaukee. Uh, they are five games ahead of Chicago for that second wild card spot. They also rank second in offensive walks on average per game. They are winners in nine out of their last ten on the road. Now, total-wise, Milwaukee 6-2 and two to the under in their last eight. Cincinnati 70% to the under in their last ten. Give me the Brewers, minus 145, and the under nine runs in that game. Next matchup, Twins, Tigers, 640 Detroit. The Twins are 240, total of nine. Randy Dobnak for the Twins, Daniel Norris for the Tigers. Norris is just 3-13 and 13 with a 4.58 ERA, 1.34 whip. The Tigers are the worst team in Major League Baseball. They are 46 and 110 on the year. That's a 295 win percentage. They're also dead last in scoring on average per game. Now, Minnesota on the other side, they are second in scoring, first in hits, first place in the AL Central. And when it comes to the total, Minnesota's 44 and 32 to the over on the road. I'm going to lean Twins minus one and a half in the over nine runs in that game. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to the show. Got some lines of personal leans out for Wednesday's Major League Baseball action. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. The weekend is almost here. Now, before we go ahead and move on, uh, just want to take a, a quick time out and remind you to uh, check me out on my website at patreon.com slash page. We are 6-3 and three in our last nine underdog plays on that site. We're also 6-1-1 one one in our last eight daily double picks on that site. And we are 11-3-1 and three and one in our college football plays. That's right, 11-3-1 in our college football package thus far for the 2019 season. There's also plenty of free content on that site. 
Uh, we do daily plays on that site. We have a bunch of different memberships and packages, and they begin at just $1.99 per month. And like I said, there's plenty of free content there as well, including my current record. So if you want to see how I'm doing on that site, just go right to the homepage, patreon.com slash Brock Page. My record is right there for you to take a look at. All right, let's go ahead and dive back into some more free lines of personal liens right here on YouTube. All starts Eastern Standard Time. And on deck, we've got the Cubs taking on the Pirates, 705 Pittsburgh. The Cubs are minus 200, total at nine. So a 10 cent move towards Chicago, movement downward on the total. The Cubbies open a buck 90, up to 200. Total open nine and a half, down to nine flat. 66% are leaning Cubs, 67% shaded toward the over. Right now, Pittsburgh's plus 185 on the money line. The Cubbies are plus 105, laying the run and a half. We have John Lester for the Cubs, Dario Agrizal for Pittsburgh. Agrizal is 4-5 and five with a 5.08 ERA, 1.40 whip. Meanwhile, Big John Lester on the other side for Chicago, 13-10 and 10 on the year, 161 strikeouts. Now, the Pirates have dropped 9 out of their last 10 ball games. They've also won just 32 out of 76 at home. Now, the Cubbies on the other side, 5-1 and one in their last six head-to-head -head matchups with the Pirates. The Cubbies are also 7th in runs allowed on average per game. Now, total-wise, Pittsburgh 50-26 and 26 to the over at PNC Park. I'm going to lean Chicago minus 1.5 in the over nine runs in that game. Next matchup. Phil's Nats, 705 Washington. The Nats are 160, total at 10. Nickel fade of Washington in the early wagering. The Nats open a buck 65, down to 160. Totals at 10 runs. 57% are leaning Washington, 54% shaded toward the over. Right now, Philadelphia is plus 150 on the money line. The Nats are plus 125, laying the run at a half. We have Drew Smiley for the Phil's, Anibal Sanchez for the Nats. Sanchez is 10 and 8 on the year, 391 ERA, 1.29 whip. He's also struck out 127 batters. Drew Smiley on the other side, just 4 and 7 on the year, 6.44 ERA. Washington clinched a playoff berth last night. They are locked up for a wild card spot. A uh, lot of concerns from folks in this spot here is is this a hangover game? Well, it could potentially be, but they're 5 and 1 in their last 6. I think they're focused on taking care of business. They're 45 and 31 at home. Meanwhile, Philadelphia, um, we're looking at a legit chance of this Phillies team maybe not even finishing out at 500, which is absolutely embarrassing. Uh, same trend as last year for these guys. Uh, noticing some really bad trends with this team and very consistent trends with these uh, with this team. So might need to make some changes in Philadelphia. Uh, the Phillies are 22nd in road scoring, 20th in hits allowed. When it comes to the total, the Phillies are 70% to the under in their last 10, taking on the Nats. I'm going to lean Washington minus a buck 60 in the under 10 runs in that game. Next matchup, Orioles, Blue Jays, 7.07 Toronto. The Jays are 165, total 10 and a half. Nickel move toward Toronto, movement upward on the total. Jays open a buck 60, up to 165. Total open 10, up to 10 and a half. 60% are leaning Toronto, 83% shaded toward the over. Right now, Baltimore is plus 150 on the money line. Toronto plus a buck 10, laying the run and a half. We have Gabe Enoa for the O's, Jake Wagas Pack for the Jays. Wagas Pack has struck out 58 batters in 72 innings pitched. Gabe Enoa is 1 and 9 on the year, 5.65 ERA, 1.37 whip. Baltimore is last in runs allowed, 28th in hits allowed. Meanwhile, Toronto winners in six out of their last nine ball games. When it comes to the total, Toronto's nine and three to the over in their last dozen. Give me Toronto minus 165 in the over 10 and a half in that game. Next matchup, Yankees, Rays, 7-10 Tampa Bay. The Rays are 115, total at nine. Jonathan Losiga for the Yankees, Charlie Morton for the Rays. Morton's 15 and 6 with a 3.6, a 3.15 ERA and a 1.10 WHIP. He's also struck out 231 batters. The Rays are half a game ahead of Cleveland for that second wild card spot in the American League. They are 30 games over 500 at 94 and 64 overall for the year. Winners in seven out of their last 10. They're also third in runs allowed at home. This Rays team is also fifth in hits allowed at home, second in walks allowed at home and third in striking batters out at home. Now, the Yankees already clinched the division. Uh, they've dropped two out of their last four, five out of their last ten. Looks like they're kind of putting it 
in cruise control here, although they could potentially uh, lock up home field advantage uh, with a nice stretch of wins to finish out the season. So uh, they certainly do have something to uh, play for here. Uh, but regardless, the Yankees 25th and runs allowed on the road, 25th and hits allowed when traveling as well. Now, total-wise, the Yankees are 51-26 and 26 to the over away from home. Meanwhile, the Rays on the other side, 6-2 and two to the over in their last eight. I'm going to lean Tampa Bay, minus a buck 15, and the over nine runs in that game. Next matchup, Marlins, Mets, 7-10, Flushing, Queens. The Mets are minus 400, total 7.5. We saw a 40-cent move toward New York. They opened 360, up to 400, total 7.5. 64% are leaning Mets, 77% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Marlins are plus 360 on the money line. The Mets minus a buck 70, laying the run and a half. We have Robert Duggar for the Marlins, Jake DeGrom for the Mets. DeGrom's 10-8 and 8 with a 2.51 ERA, 0.99 whip. He's also struck out 248 batters. Is he extremely egregiously overvalued in this one? Let's find out. Uh, Robert Duggar on the other side for the Marlins, 0-3 on the year, 4-4-5 ERA. Uh, the Mets are ninth in hits on average per game, fourth in strikeouts at home. Uh, so uh, punching a lot of batters out in Flushing, Queens. Now uh, Miami on the other side, worst record in the National League, 29th in scoring, which is second last in Major League Baseball. They're also 28th in hits. When it comes to the number, Miami's 80% of the over in their last five. Uh, I'm going to be very chalky here. Give me the Mets minus one and a half in the over. Seven and a hook. Next game. Uh, Boston? I did not... Uh, I was going to say, I didn't cap this game. I must have skipped over this one. Boston Rangers, 8.05 Eastern first pitch in Arlington. Uh, I'm going to take a free pass on this one, just like everybody else does. All right, next game, Cleveland taking on the White Sox. 8-10 Chicago guaranteed rate field. The Indians are minus 300, total at 9. 72% are leaning Indians, 77% shaded toward the over. Uh, the White Sox are plus 265 on the money line. The Indians minus a buck 80, laying the run and a half. We have Shane Bieber for the Indians, Ross Detweiler for the White Sox. Detweiler's 2-5 and five with a 6.98 ERA, 1.72 whip. Shane Bieber on the other side for Cleveland, 15-7 and seven on the year, 3.23 ERA, 1.03 whip. He's also struck out 252 batters. Cleveland is a half a game back for that second wild card spot in the American League. Uh, they're right in the mix there uh, within striking distance of a playoff berth. They're 93-64 and 64 overall for the year, nearly 30 games over 500. They're also... Uh, winning games on the road. They're 44 and 32 away from home, uh, 45 and 31 against the spread when traveling as, as well. And of course, when I refer to the spread in Major League Baseball, I'm referring to the run line. So once again, 45 and 31 ATS away from home. They're perfect 5 and 0 in their last five when traveling, and they are first in runs allowed on the road as well. Now the White Sox on the other side, winners in just four out of their last 12. Uh, they've only covered just 29 out of 75 ball games at home this year, and they rank 27th in walks allowed. Now, total-wise, Cleveland, 12-5 and five to the under in their last 17. I'm going to lean Indians minus 1.5 in and the under 9 runs in that game. Next matchup, Braves-Royals, 815 Kauffman Stadium. The Braves are minus 200, total 9.5. 76% are leaning Atlanta, 72% shaded toward the over. Right now, KC's plus 180 on the money line. Atlanta minus 130 on the run line. We have Josh Tomlin getting some action here for Atlanta. Uh, Mike Montgomery for Kansas City. Montgomery comes into this game with a 3-9 record, 5-0-0 ERA. Meanwhile, Tomlin on the other side, 2-1 on the year, 3-8-2 ERA, 1.10 whip. Now, Kansas City is 27th in scoring, 27th in hits allowed. Meanwhile, the Braves on the other side, uh, first in the NL East, they did clinch a playoff spot. Uh, they're also winning ball games away from home as well. They're 46 and 31 on the road this year. Now, total wise, the Braves five and one of the over in their last six, taking on the AL Central. Give me the Braves minus one and a half in the over nine and a hook. Next game, Rockies Giants 9:45 San Francisco. This game currently off the board with Tim Melville for. 
Colorado, Jeff Samarja for the Giants. Samarja is coming into this game with a 3.64 ERA, 1.11 whip. He's also struck out 135 batters. Tim Melville on the other side for Colorado, just 2-3 and three on the year, 5-4-0 ERA. San Francisco has won two out of their last three games where Samarja made the start. They're also sixth and walks allowed at home. Uh, winners in four out of their last eight ball games. Meanwhile, on the uh, other side, Colorado just two and four in their last six. Winners in just 28 out of 79 away from home. I'm going to lean San Francisco winning that game outright for some money line cash. All right, next matchup. Oakland taking on the Angels. 10.07 Los Angeles. The A's are minus 160, total 8.5. We saw a 15 cent fade of Oakland and movement downward on the total. The A's open a buck 75, down to 160. Total open 9, down to 8.5. 75% are leaning Oakland, 60% shaded toward the under. Uh, right now, Los Angeles is plus 150 on the money line. Oakland minus a buck 05 on the run line. We got a Frankie Montas. Uh, experience a Frankie Montas experience no a Frankie Montas appearance uh this is his first start in 80 games uh after he was suspended uh so Frankie Montas welcome back uh we have Andrew Heaney for the Angels Heaney comes into this game with a 1.28 whip and 111 strikeouts and like I said Frankie Montas first action in 80 games uh I am running out of time here I'm incredibly late uh, for work. So I'm going to lean Oakland minus 160 and the over eight and a half in that game. And we have two more matchups to go, but I did not. Well, I, I can't. I got to go. Uh, Astros at the Mariners, 10-10 Eastern first pitch in Seattle. Uh, Astros are very good. The Mariners struggle. Uh, I'm going to take a free pass on this one. And then next and final game for the show, it's going to be Dodgers Padres, 10-10 Eastern first pitch in San Diego. It's a pass for me. I'm not going to play that one. No, seriously, uh, pass on those last two because I got to get out of here. All right, let's go ahead and slide to our uh, pick, uh, quick pick recap brought to you by patreon.com slash Brock Page. I am running incredibly late. Um, we're going to go uh, Oakland minus 160 over eight and a half. San Fran winning their game outright for some money line cash. Braves minus one and a half over nine and a hook. Cleveland minus one and a half under nine runs. Tampa Bay minus 115 over nine runs. Mets minus one and a half over seven and a half. Uh, Toronto minus 165 over 10 and a hook. Washington minus 160 under 10 runs. Cubs minus one and a half over nine runs. Twins minus one and a half over nine runs. Milwaukee minus 145 under nine runs. St. Louis minus 115 under nine runs. All right, guys, that is going to do it for me. Once again, don't forget to check me out on my website at Patreon dot com slash Brock page we're six and three in our last nine underdog plays on that site we're also six one and one in our last eight daily double picks and we're 11 three and one in our college football package we have a bunch of different memberships that you can subscribe to and they begin at just one dollar and 99 cents per month there's also plenty of free content there as well including my current record link for that site is in the description section below but most importantly I got to thank you for watching me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. Happy Wednesday to you. Best of luck to you. And don't forget to check me out on patreon.com slash Brock Page.